Today, you're gonna learn how to build a simple stream using OBS Studio. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley, AKA Miss Cast Joe. Uh, just a little reminder before we get started, if you enjoy the video, uh, please make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. That would be a very giant help to me. So yeah, let's do it, Team Joe. So anyways, today, we are here to demystify OBS. Uh, somebody who might turn it on for the very first time might be a little intimidated by it. It looks like it's a lot, uh, but it's actually really simple, especially to build a nice simple stream, which is what most people need anyways. So let's get to work. Dear God, where have I brought us? Not only am I looking at one intimidating screen, I'm looking at an Inception version of it. Okay, so I've just loaded a display capture in just so you could see what I'm doing with OBS. I can move my mouse around and everything's hunky old dory. Now, first thing we gotta do is build us a scene. So we've already got one. It always comes default with one individual scene uh, called scene, you know, creatively enough. Uh, so, this is where we can start. So we can build as many scenes as we want, but we gotta start somewhere. So let's start with scene. Uh, I'm going to rename it just cause I like to have everything nice and organized. And so we're gonna rename this and we're going to call it, this is gonna be our first one. We're just gonna call it camera. It's gonna be a very simple scene. So first things first, I wanna add a camera. It just so happens I have one plugged in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click add down here, the little plus button. And then here's all the different things you can add. So just a quick look at everything you can get here. So an audio input capture, an audio output capture, a browser source, which we'll get into in another video. We're not gonna dive into that this time. A color source display capture, which we're looking at right now. You could do any of your computer screens here. Uh, game capture, say exactly like it sounds. This wouldn't be if you were running a console through a capture card or something, but this would be the actual physical capturing of an application on your PC. Image, exactly what it sounds like. Image slideshow, very interesting. You can get into this. I use it for a video podcast that I produce. Uh, media source, this could be audio or video and you can have things playing out as you trigger it. Uh, scene, so you can actually take a scene that you've built on the left and then insert that. This is another thing I do and we're gonna include this in another video. We're gonna do, this is our OBS 101. That'll be in our OBS 201. Uh, shaders, source mirrors, text, you can do uh, simple crawls. Uh, I use it for uh, some auto-generated text that I use when I do scorekeeping for a show that I do. Uh, you could also have crawls, any number of things through here. We'll try We'll play with that in a little bit. Uh, VLC video source. Video capture device is the one we are going to need today. So let's go here. Now I'm going to name it because, again, I like to keep things organized. So I'm going to call it my GoPro because it is my GoPro. And then we're going to look, and there we are in my cam link 4K. So from here, you're going to notice a bunch of different uh, settings and stuff like that. You can pretty much work with the device default. Uh, we'll look at filters and that in a little bit, but uh, just going through, play with them as you feel uh, like you need to. And then we click OK. So we see me. That's great. That's a start. But right now, I want to still show you my OBS setup. So what I need to do is I need to shrink this window down and that's easily done. If you uh, click on the little red spot in any of the corners of the frame, you'll see it when you're actually doing it. I can click and drag to shrink. See, just like that, whoa, whoa. Okay, simple enough. Now, if I want to trim, crop, do whatever I want, uh, with this otherwise I can also take that and if I click alt hold it down and I go to any of these I'm now trimming it in so I can shrink it down and I can shrink it down and then just make myself a little bit smaller I'll just stick myself up in the corner right here because you you can't put baby in the corner but you can put me in the corner I'm totally fine with it so first things first let's notice what we're noticing here so we see something in our audio mixer that wasn't here before this is the source that we just added which is our GoPro uh, it is capturing out of you you can see it's capturing really loud if I'm quiet for a second Look how bloody noisy that is. 
So this obviously wouldn't be something you'd want to capture. You're not using your webcam audio. You're not using anything like that. We have a microphone and we're going to add that. So I'm going to get rid of this audio. We're going to mute it so we don't hear it anymore. Then I'm going to right click and I'm just going to hide it just so this doesn't get too busy. I only want what's actually going to be here to be here. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is my trusty microphone, and I have my Elgato Wave. So this time we're not gonna add a source under sources for our microphone. You could do it. So again, if I clicked add and I went into audio input capture, it would find my microphone and then it would show up in the mixer. Why we're not going to do that though, is that will only apply to this scene. So if I add another scene, my microphone's gonna be gone. I want it to be there all the time. There might be some use cases where you might only use it in one scene or another, uh, but this is not one of those times. So we're going to go all the way over to the settings. We're going to revisit the settings towards the end of this video, but we're just going to do something really quick. I'm going to click the audio. And then you can see here there's a bunch of global audio devices. So these are the things that are going to show up on all your scenes all the time. Okay, so you can have two different desktop audio sources and then you can have four different mics coming into this so this is good again if you're doing a video podcast and you're using multiple mic sources for me i'm either using this microphone when i'm by myself so i only need one or i have my roadcaster pro with xlr mics plugged into it so it only comes in as one source so either way i'm good but let's just assume you're not and you might need multiples this is where you would do it today we're just going to add my wave so i'm going to click where it says disabled and now we're gonna get my whole list of different mics. There's a lot to go through, but all I care right now about is my El mic in Elgato Wave 3. So I gotta click that, and I gotta click Apply. And I gotta click OK. And there we are. Now I have the mic that I'm looking for. You can hear me. You are always able to hear me, but that was for different reasons. Now, if I'm being really frank, if I you know bring this full screen again, Ta-da, this is it. This is a scene right by itself. Uh, you don't have to do anything fancy schmancy, at least not at the beginning. You, as you start to build things, and again, when we get to OBS 201, you're going to see all sorts of fun things that you can add and overlays and those sort of things to a screen like this. But you can add your chat to this. I could just literally load a box up in the top corner, and that could be our chat. Anything you want it to be. Uh, but this is a nice, simple, quick setup that you can use all over the place. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to get rid of my camera right now for a little bit and go back to this because now we're going to build a second scene. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click add under the scenes and I'm going to enter the name of my scene. So my next scene is going to be a gaming scene. So we'll just call it gaming. Okay, so now there's nothing there. Don't panic. Now you will notice while I don't have any sources, again, I put my display capture here just for the sake of you being able to see it. You'll see that my mic is still here. So you've been able to hear me the whole time and that's wonderful news because this would be a very weird video without at least receiving information in some form. So I suppose it would make the most sense now to actually add a video game to this so it would be my gaming scene, right? So I've actually taken my Nintendo Switch and I have plugged it in to a capture card which is plugged into my computer. I have the uh, Elgato HD60S and what I'm going to do is so we're going to click down here in the add sources and I'm going to find a video capture device just like we did for our GoPro because I'm plugging it in through a capture device and I'm going to add HD 60S because I could theoretically if I had any other system I could just plug it into that as well bam all right so there we go we can see my Nintendo switch now just because of the screen settings that I have to set for my TV you can see it's a little off I've got black on the side so I can just expand this a little bit just to get it up so it's full screen and it looks lovely. Okay, so now we're seeing our game, but you can hear it a lot right now too, and I don't necessarily want that. I'm gonna shrink this down just so you can see what I'm doing. So we'll just to toss this up in the corner. Uh, but you can see here that the audio is still pretty loud and I might want to lower that just a little bit, just so you can hear me more than the actual game. There are times when you might have uh, different needs for different situations. Uh, this is the case where I want it to be fairly quiet. And 
just so you can just kind of hear what's going on underneath. Uh, you have to keep in mind a lot of different things when you're doing gaming. Uh, you might have your chat involved. You might have that audio source involved here as well. Uh, so you might want to hear that a little bit more clearly. You might be playing music underneath. Make sure you're playing copyright free music. If you're doing that, though, you're going to get a DMCA strike without fail. So there's a lot of audio that's competing for your viewers attention. Uh, so you got to be very mindful that you're mixing it properly. So I'm going to keep this down really low for now just by controlling it on here. All right, another big bummer is that we haven't seen my face in a little while. Uh, so we're going to add that to this scene as well. So I'm going to click add. I'm going to go back to video capture device. I'm going to find my ad existing and go GoPro and click OK. And we're back again. I don't want to be this big. Uh, you can still hear the video game going in the background, so I'm just going to shrink myself down like I did before. And then we're going to make this into a full-fledged channel again. We're going to right-click here, I'm going to click Transform, and I'm going to go fit to screen. Bam. We're going to stretch this out again because we had issues with again the black bars just because of the way i have it set up for my own personal screen now the cool thing is i can put myself wherever i want i can put myself in the top corner uh you're gonna want to make sure that depending on what you're playing that you're not blocking anything vital uh so you know if you're playing something like rocket league there's a lot of information down here so you don't want to block it uh you know so you just kind of find the spot that's right for you my own personal preference if you are facing you know, my camera's off to the side a little bit here. If you're facing center, that makes me looking left. I want to be looking inward to the screen because if I put myself over here, and I'm going to tell you right now, there are great streamers who do this. This is not a rule. Uh, I have all, It's something that always drove me nuts when I look at uh, Shroud videos and stuff like that. He plays like this. I'm like, where are you looking? Where are you looking, Shroud? So... I'm going to move myself over here. And again, it might be a matter of a lot of different things. Uh, that's the best place to put it for the game that he's playing. Maybe if he moves the camera to the other side, he doesn't have the background that he wants. Uh, you know, it shows a, you know, his laundry basket or something like that. God knows. So everything looks good. Uh, the only thing I might want to do is I might want a little border around my camera, just something to uh, separate myself a little bit from the video on the screen. Uh, there's a million options to go from here. You can get yourself a... Um, an animated border. You can create one yourself. I'm just going to use a still border for this example. Uh, I'm going to take off the HD60S for a moment just so we can see what I'm about to do. So I'm going to click add again and we're going to add an image this time and let's call it border. Okay, so now I got to go searching for it. Uh, I have many, many files, so we're just going to go... Here, and here, and here, we'll just grab this little guy. Okay, so I'm going to shrink it down to a similar size as me. So you can see it's a little bit bigger than what I've got, but I can fill that because we can adjust our settings here. There we go. Got a quick border. I'm coming off the screen just a teeny bit, I'm noticing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group two sources over here. So I'm going to click on one, hold shift, and click on the other. And I'm going to right click. And then we're going to go to group selected items. Boom. See, now they appear as a group, and I can just call it cam, whatever. And now if I click cam, both items move at the same time. Uh, just another thing uh, worth noting here at this point, obviously much like in a scenario where you're um, doing something in a Photoshop or something like that, layers matter, uh, how you stack them matters. So if I took the border here and I put it underneath the GoPro, you'll see that I've cut off most of the border because now the camera's on top of it. So I put the border on top of the GoPro and it covers it up properly. So working bottom to top is the same way you work the layers. The same way as if I take the HD60S source here and I put it on top of the cam, I disappear. So we don't want that. We want me on screen. I'm in demand, baby. So there you have it. In no time, 
we got another scene going. Now the thing is, how do I switch between the scenes? So this is when we get into our transitions. I'm going to bring up a mini version now of our display capture. And you're going to see down here a little area for transitions. I'm now going to bring it up big so you can see exactly what's going on. To control transitions, there's a couple of ways to do it. So here's the first one. So you have multiple options here to decide what uh, transition you want to have going between scenes. Your typical ones are just your cut and your fade. Your cut is just a sharp cut. Your fade is a dissolve. Uh, but you can add different swipes, slides. Uh, stingers are an interesting one. That's one we'll deal with in the uh, 201 episode. Uh, but basically the idea is that an image or video comes in, takes up the full screen, and then during that full screen moment, it actually makes the switch. So it looks like one solid thing is happening, but a switch is happening behind that thing. It's interesting. Uh, fade to color, luma wipe, shader, shader, shader. Okay, all these great things. So let's just add a simple fade right now. And then you can add the duration of your fade. So right now it's 300 milliseconds. Um, you can change it here just by clicking and it'll go in 50 millisecond increments, or you can just type in whatever you want. Uh, but now all I have to do is go on to the left here and click camera, and it changes to my camera scene like so. Hi, I was here. And now if I go back to my gaming, it fades to that. Uh, if I wanted to do something a little bit more fun, I can add quite a slide. We'll just call it slide. And then it gives you a chance to preview the transition like that. So now if I use that and I go back to my camera, go back to this, go back to the other one, or you can do something else that's fun. Forget about this altogether and you right click on your scenes and you can have a transition override. So transition override, you can now cut, use any of your selected types of transition. So I can have a fade that goes to this one. And then for this one, I'll create, so I'm right clicking again and I'll just create the slide for this one. So now if I go back to the gaming, it dissolves, but if I go back to the camera, it slides. So, and you can do that with each individual one. You can actually do it with sources now too, with the new version, and you're gonna get that in the next video as well. So there you go. We made a simple stream. We did it fairly quickly, but there's so much more we can do. So make sure you keep an eye out. Maybe you hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell, hit the like while you're at it too, if you enjoyed the video. Uh, those all help me out. And we're going to get more videos out and we're going to get deeper into this program and we're going to make things a little bit more elaborate, but not too complicated, I promise you. So uh, we'll see you next time. And in the meantime, get to work. June 25th, 1977. I want to talk about a man whose last name is Sullivan and I can't find his first name for some reason. But on Sullivan. June 25th, 1977, he was struck by lightning for the seventh time. And I want to take you through a little story that is... God trying to kill this man for most of his life.